live from the lockdown United States of America, in stereo where available. It's the Watch Me Go Bro Late Night Special with Timepiece Comedy. Your questions answered. And musical guest, Lady Gaga. And now, the man who's eaten more Cheetos this week than Chester Cheetah, the host of Watch Me Go Bro! Welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. This is our first late night special. I'm super excited. You know, I'm coming to you from home today. I'm not in the studio. And because I'm not in the studio, I don't have a uh, studio audience because they've all been furloughed. Yeah, yeah, they've all been furloughed. You know, before this virus started, I had no idea what the word furlough meant. I thought furlough was Rob Lowe's much hairier brother. <laughs> Oh boy, Rolex, Rolex watches is in the news. Did you, did you hear this? Did you hear this one? Rolex is not gonna release any new watches in 2020. Can you believe that? Can you believe it? Fans around the world were shocked and outraged that they'd have to wait an entire year to be horribly disappointed. <laughs> oh, Vacheron Constantine is in the news today. Yep, they sure are. They're thinking of changing their name. Yeah, and they said the reasoning behind it was because there are not enough people around the world who are classy enough to be able to pronounce the company name. Yeah, they said, that's what they said. So they're changing their name to Supercalifragilisticexpibragadocious. <laughs> they're not all gonna be winners, not all gonna be winners. You know, Hollywood, Hollywood has been hit hard by the coronavirus and a lot of productions have been canceled or postponed. And the new Indiana Jones movie was supposed to start filming last month and they, they had to postpone it. But the producers were very excited. They were very excited because they figured they were gonna try to tailor make this to uh, the coronavirus to reach a few more fans. So they changed the title to Indiana Jones and the Search for a Haircut. <laughs> I am definitely in need of a haircut for certain. So Invicta watches, you guys love Invicta watches? Eh, yeah, no? Well, they are celebrating their success of the Invicta 1953 in homage to the uh, original Rolex Submariner that came out. And, you know, to capitalize on the success of that, they've decided to release an additional watch this year. Yeah, an additional watch, yep. It's called the Invicta COVID-20. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure how that one's gonna sell. I mean, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Jeez. So Basil World, did you guys hear this? Basil World was canceled this year due to the coronavirus after a lot of the vendors pulled out of the venue. Yeah, so I guess uh, you're just gonna have to pretend like you have enough money to buy a Rolex watch at your local AD this year. <laughs> you know who you are. Those guys get in there, take a photo of a couple of different watches on their on their wrist, and then you're like, "Oh, yeah, which one should I buy, guys?" You post it on a forum. Which one should I get? I can't decide between the blue and the black. Oh, come on! You're not gonna. You're 22 years old. You can't afford any of these. You're not fooling anybody. Just stop. Just stop. Just stop. Oh, man. Gosh, those guys drive me nuts. According to a source I just made up, the number one Halloween costume this year, and, and this is all gonna be over with by Halloween for, sh for sure, but the number one Halloween costume this year actually will be the coronavirus. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, you're supposed to tape uh, corona bottles to your body and then wear a mask. And, you know, it's not really that funny. But the number two costume, the number two costume, fur low. <laughs> Let's put up a picture. Can we put up a picture? Yeah, okay, so, so there's Rob Lowe and then Furlow. 
Yeah, you know, somebody should send that to Rob Lowe. I would really like to, uh, to, to get him on board with dressing like that for Halloween. I think it would be great. Well, we have got a great show for you guys today. I'm going to be answering the questions that you submitted the other day. Very excited about that. And a little bit later, we've got Lady Gaga performing. So stick around. We'll be right back. Where will you be when your diarrhea comes back? You should have taken Imodium the first time. It stops diarrhea, often in just one dose. Imodium AD. Don't wait till it's too late. Welcome back to the Watch Me Go Broke Late Night Special. It's time for your questions answered. All right. Today's first question comes from John Buckmaster. Uh, John writes, I'm looking very forward to the monologue. Well, I hope it didn't disappoint. It probably did, but I hope it didn't. I recommend staying away from Conan O'Brien for inspiration. I tried not to, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, his question is, if I had uh, $400 burning a hole in my pocket and I could pick just one diver, any diver, which one would it be and why and pick a color? Gosh, you know, $400 is, uh, you know, that's going to put you at a lot of the micro brands um, are around the $400 range. Off the top of my head, and I, I tried not to really research any of these questions. I just wanted to give you a, a genuine off the top of my head answer. And I'm going to say, gosh, I'd really like to get a Laurier Neptune. Um, really the first generation Neptune. I would really, really like that. But I think, you know, maybe a black uh, Laurier Neptune second generation might be okay. I, I, that'd probably be the, the best one I think you could probably get right now for the $400 price point. So, I mean, I don't know. Just my opinion. Really like it. So, next question comes from Ben Mullenix. Uh, what's, what's the uh, one watch you would hope to own one day? It's a very good question, Ben. I appreciate that question. Um, gosh, the one that really kind of uh, sticks with me every time I see it is really an Omega Speedmaster, and and not any of the like the new fangled ones or the different color ones. Uh, I, I'm specifically talking about the Moon Watch. I'd really like one of those, or maybe a Speedy Reduced. Um, I'm kind of attracted to the smaller size, um, so I think yeah, I'm, I'm thinking an Omega Speedmaster. That that would be one that uh, I'd really hope to own one day. So next question comes from Rob. Rob, I, I love your comments uh, on my videos. I think they're great. And the thing about Rob, if you go back and, and look through my videos, his avatar is like a Rastafarian Homer Simpson. So every time I read his comments, I end up reading them in Homer Simpson's voice. So it actually it gives me a, a lot of uh, enjoyment and laughter when I'm, when I'm reading his comments. But uh, his question is, tell us more about your car. And I'm assuming that he's talking about the blue car that was in the, uh, oh gosh, what video was it? It's a couple videos ago. I, I did a thing about social distancing and, and stuff like that. So that's actually, uh, it's not really going to be that impressive once I tell you. That's a 1997 BMW Z3. Um, I'm a huge James Bond fan, if I haven't mentioned it on the, the channel before. So... The first movie I ever saw in theaters was Goldeneye. So, uh, you know, that was really the first James Bond car that I saw was the Z3. And, of course, in that movie, it didn't do anything. And, of course, it, the, the watch in the movie, that, that's kind of what got me into watches as well, was the Omega Seamaster Seamaster uh, 300M. And um, so the car, you know, it, it, when I saw it in the movie, I was like, oh my gosh, I hope to have one of those one day. And then once they were released to the public, every middle-aged housewife bought one. So it kind of emasculated the car a little bit. Uh, so there, there is a little bit of a stigma with having that car now. And of course it's not the same color as the one in the movie, but, uh, probably about gosh, 10, 
10 years ago or so, 11 years ago, I, I stumbled across one that was a pretty good deal, so, so I picked it up. But uh, yeah, and I work on it a little bit myself, so it's a lot of fun to drive. Not the most masculine car in the world, but certainly certainly uh, uh, looks good on camera, so that's why, why I use it. Uh, next question comes from Brilliant Radiance. Uh, my question is, when will you do gorgeous macro shots set to Barry White? Uh, that's a very good question. As soon as Barry White's music is copyright free, then I will do that for certain. <laughs> Jeez. No, that would be cool. That would be really neat. Yeah. Next question comes from Reggie Bannister. Do you feel that watches are really just subconscious reminders of mortality? And also, what, what, what is the uh, watch you would like to be buried with? Uh, Reggie, those are very morbid. Uh, that's a very morbid question there. It's like, you know, do you think watches remind you when you're going to die? And then uh, what watch you want to be buried with? So um, I don't know, man. I got to be honest with you. I, I'm not that deep. I'm really not that deep in case you can't tell. I, I don't I don't know. I don't think they are reminders of mortality. Um, and the watch that I'd want to be buried with is all of them. I, I don't know, man. I, I really enjoy uh, all of the watches that I have and all the watches I come in contact with, you know, watches that are 34 millimeters, watches that are 44 millimeters, you know, quartz, automatic. I love them all, which is why I, you know, really started this channel. So I don't think I could pick one that I want to be buried with. Probably the most expensive one. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to, give anybody any inheritance or anything for sure next question is from big nose 13 <clears throat> excuse me i got a little something in my throat there big nose 13 how do you rate your heimdaller sea shepherd after a few months of ownership i really fancy one you know, I love that watch. The only regret that I have is I probably would not have gone with the green version, um, even though that's the one I, I wanted from the beginning. Uh, I probably would go with a black or a white one just because they're more versatile, uh, especially with straps. And that, that watch is pretty difficult to put a NATO on and take off because there's no room between the case and the spring bars. So you're really having to, you know, uh, you know, take the spring bar out, put the strap in and put the spring bars back in. It, that's not something I really want to do. And of course on steel, um, you know, it, it wears pretty good. It is a big watch. I think there's a question later that, that involves this watch as well. So I won't go too in depth, but no, I really like it. I think it's great. It's got, uh, you know, all the specs, ceramic, uh, bezel insert, sapphire crystal, NH35 movement, you know, you really can't go wrong and, you know, it's a little over $200 and it's, you know, it's just a great watch. It's substantial. And I think you're really getting uh, your money's worth for sure with that one. Next question is another question from John Buckmaster. And his question is, what's your favorite watch in your personal collection and why? And what is the watch in your personal collection that you consider to be the best, the best deal and value? Well, you know, I really, really, really like the, um, gosh, now it escapes me. And I talk about it all the time. Oh, the BLWRX 1000 meter diver. I really, really like that watch. I think it's great with the loom ceramic bezel. That is really up there on my list. If it's not number one, it's definitely number two. And if this one is not number one, it's definitely number two. The uh, Seiko Flightmaster, I love that watch. I love it. Um, I think it's fantastic. I like wearing it on an uh, Omega NATO, which I know is, you know, way ridiculous. You know, that the strap's probably worth more than the watch is. But I don't know. I really enjoy that watch. Seiko Flightmaster for sure. And the one that's the best uh, value Value for money in my collection, I think it's got to be the Pagani Design Submariner homage. And really, it's not really a Submariner, a Submariner homage so much as it is a uh, like a Sea Dweller 43, like the new Sea Dwellers that they've come out, because those have Cyclops, and I think they're 43 millimeters. So it's, it's more in that regard. But, you know, for 
under 70 bucks or right around 70 bucks sapphire crystal ceramic bezel um yeah the bracelet is great uh it's 100 meters of water resistance nh35 movement i really don't think you can go wrong with that watch and i think it's definitely the best value for money for money in my collection steve dan writes since the name of this channel is Watch Me Go Broke, how close are you to actually going broke? I'm day to day. I'm day to day like everybody else. No, I'm I'm just kidding. No, I'm I'm okay. I know there's a lot of folks out there, you know, that are that are struggling right now. Um, I know a lot of people have been furloughed. A lot of people have lost their jobs. Um, I had a little bit of a reduc. I had a not m more than a little bit of a, a reduction in in my pay as well. Uh, still lucky to have a job so so that's good um but um no you know i'm still here i'm gonna bring you guys content for as long as i can um and i don't see that stopping anytime soon so appreciate the question steve dan next question is from booger t wang it's a great question and a great name Booger writes, in many of the intros, you appear in a movie house area. Why is that? Well, it looks better than this. Honestly, that's why I did it. Uh, I felt like, you know, it was a big open area. It had lights, flashy lights, stuff like that. I just felt like it looked better um, than, you know, this setup that I'm, that I'm doing right now. Um, and uh, I I'm glad you brought that up because I think something needs to be said. Um, movie theaters are really struggling right now. Um, and I've got a lot of friends in the industry and, and they're really hurting. Um, in case you didn't know, all movie theaters pretty much in the entire world are closed right now. And that means that all of their workers were furloughed as well. Uh, I know AMC, the, one of the largest theater chains in the world, is struggling saying they might not open back up. And that'd be a really, you know, that'd be a really big shame. Um, I'm a huge movie fan, in case you can't tell, you know, movie prop, stuff like that. Um, they need your help, you know, and, and, uh, and, and how you can help in that regard is uh, movie theaters kind of slipped through the cracks in the bailout that came down the pipe. And I don't know if other countries are doing the, the bailouts and stuff for, for the businesses or not. But, but in America, there was a small business bank loan and a big business bank loan. And movie theaters kind of, at least some of the smaller chains, slip through the, the cracks a little bit. Um, so it, it needs to be brought to the attention of the senators and congressmen. And I've tried, you know, we've, we've, I've tried tweeting to try to help out and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, guys, write your senators, write your congressmen, you know, if they can include movie theaters uh, in another bailout, I think it'd really be great. They definitely do they need the help for sure. And it is quite possible that a lot of them will will not open back up. So if you are a movie lover and you enjoy going to the movies, please do this. Just take a minute of your time, get these senators and congressmen on board uh, with uh, providing some additional uh, funding so movie theaters can reemploy all their workers and uh, and all that good jazz. So uh, appreciate the question, Booger, and I hope that answers your question. <laughs> or yeah, I don't know, Booger T. Wang. Great name. Next question comes from Chris uh, Deverin. Uh, he says, has there ever been a well-made watch review of the Hamilton Below Zero? And I don't know. I was not familiar with that watch uh, prior to your question. I, I did uh, look it up a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's a watch that would really suit uh, my particular tastes in something that I would uh, purchase, but I certainly would uh, like to review it, uh, you know, if I get a chance. Um, so I don't know if there's a good uh, review of it because I'd never heard of it, but, but certainly I, I would definitely like to, to do a review of it if possible. Richard Izard writes, Do you find the Heimdaller Tuna too big? Just thinking about the thickness of the watch. Um, that's the one we I spoke about a little bit earlier, the uh, green Heimdaller Tuna. Uh, no, I don't think it's too thick. Um, because the lug-to-lug -lug is very short, so it doesn't take up a tremendous amount of real estate on your wrist. It's just, 
a little bit tall, and I, I'm sorry I don't have it off the top of my head how thick it is, but it didn't strike me as a watch that was, you know, too thick. Um, I've, you know, I, I'm sure that I have, you know, some watches that are around about the same thickness. So um, the thickness of a watch actually doesn't bother me. In fact, the the thicker the better. Am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But but anyway, the the tallness of the watch doesn't bother me. It's the lug to lug where it overhangs the wrist and you protruding end links. That kind of bothers me a little bit, but uh, but generally I love that Heimdall or Tuna. I think it's great. And if you're looking to get one, get the black or the white one. I think you'll be very happy. Two more questions here today, guys. J City Reviews, uh, they write, do you keep up with watch news like new releases from companies? And if so, what are some of the sources you use to stay on top of information like this? Um, no, I don't have any sources. I don't generally follow the industry too much. Um, like I said, when I started this channel, you know, I'm a, I'm a regular guy. I'm not an expert on watches. I don't claim to be. I hope you guys don't think I am because certainly, you know, I'm not. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, I, f I find some information on, on forums, and there's a couple of great, you know, Facebook forums. I know uh, the UGWC uh, does one, Urban Watch Gentry, of course, and uh, Just Bluefish Watches. Uh, you know, I find their uh, Facebook forums very informative and entertaining, and I, I get a lot of my, uh, at least, uh, that's how I found out about the Invicta 1953. Someone had posted on there and I was like, oh my gosh, that looks great. And then I go to find my research from there. Searching Amazon and stuff, you know, Amazon new releases, you know, I look at those and yeah, you know, that, that's basically what I do. I, I, I kind of stumble across a lot of my information. And so, yeah. And of course, when I started the channel, I did have a number of watches already in my collection that I could, you know, start the channel with and then sort of build on there. So, so that's kind of what I do. It doesn't really answer your question, but you know, I don't want to lie to you. I really don't know that much about anything. And finally, Alejandro Perez writes, what would be your one watch for the rest of your life? That is a tough, tough, tough question because I have not experienced every watch there is in the world. I doubt you guys have. Um, I think a lot of people would say something along the lines of like a Rolex Submariner or something like that. But uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I love all the watches in my collection. I love new watches. I love vintage watches, you know, watches from the 60s, 70s, 80s. I love those. Um, I love the new watches that come out. There's a ton of micro brands that I want to check out. Like uh, I know Hamton, they, they're looking great. Um, Zelos, uh, those guys, those are watches I all want to check out. So as far as the one watch for the rest of my life, if you forced me to choose, gosh, oh, man, this is tough. It's so tough. I think it would have to be, obviously, one watch for the rest of my life. It would probably have to be an automatic. You know, we'll go with that. I'm going to go with the Seiko SKX. I mean, I, I know you guys are rolling your eyes, I'm sure, but Seiko SKX, gosh, they're all the, the, the lineup, the, the orange one, the, the blue one, and the black one, and the SKX, it's just such a great, watch and it's reliable and it looks great you can use it in a few different situations so guys that's really yeah that's really what i'm thinking the skx so man we ran long today pretty long so uh gosh lady gaga we have run out of time she is not going to be able to perform today you know very sorry my thanks to her for showing up guys I hope you enjoyed this Watch Me Go Broke late night special. It was super cool for me to do it, and I will see you next time.